Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Creality has just released their top of the line benchtop laser engraver, the Falcon 2 Pro. This state of the art laser engraver has almost every feature you could need, from an iSafe class 1 laser certified enclosure to the built in camera for easy positioning, at a price that won't break the bank. But is the Falcon 2 Pro the laser engraver for you? Let's find out. Before we begin, this Falcon 2 Pro was provided for me to review by Creality. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The Creality Falcon 2 Pro is a fully enclosed benchtop laser engraver, which uses a 455 nanometer blue light diode laser. Diode lasers are great for woods, opaque acrylic, stone, and other natural materials, but they won't work on transparent materials like clear plastic or glass. The Falcon 2 Pro has three different versions, a 22 watt laser, a 40 watt laser, and a 60 watt laser. The only difference is the power of the laser module, and the rest of the machine and enclosures are the same. I have the 22 watt version with me today, but I'll mention the 40 watt and 60 watt differences where appropriate. Starting with the laser module, we see the dual cooling fans on the side, which cool the diode lasers and help clear away the smoke. Helping with that is the air assist compressor, whose hose connects to the top of the laser module and pumps air out of the nozzle at the bottom. Looking at the nozzle, we can see that the the nozzle is not in the center of the module, but rather offset towards the back. This makes manual positioning a bit tougher, as it sometimes can be hard to see where the nozzle is. I ended up drawing lines on the side of the module to indicate nozzle position to help with that. The front of the module has a transparent plastic shield that blocks much of the laser light while still giving enough visibility. At the top of the laser module, we see three alarm lights. The air light turns green when the air assist is turned on and running at max speed. It'll turn yellow if the air is flowing, but not fast, indicating that the compressor filter might need to be changed. And it'll turn red when the air assist compressor is not running. The fire light will turn red and sound an alarm if it detects fire. And the third alarm is the lens alarm, which will trigger if it detects that the lens is dirty, giving you a heads up to clean the lens before the lens gets damaged. I like that these alarms are prominently positioned directly on the laser module. As you go up in power, they just pack more 6 watt diode laser sources inside of the module. The 22 watt version has 4 6 watt diodes, while the 40 watt version has 8 diodes, and the 60 watt version has 10 diodes. As you combine more laser diodes together, perfect alignment is harder to achieve, so you end up with a slightly larger laser dot. That can decrease engraving quality, especially on images. To combat that, the 40 watt and 60 watt versions include a free 1.6 watt laser module that you can swap out when you need extremely fine detailed engraving. The 60 watt version also has another trick up its sleeve. That single module is three lasers in one. You can switch between 60 watt, 40 watt, and 22 watt modes via software. It's not just adjusting the power percentage, but actually turns off some of the diodes when they aren't needed. So you can have all of the advantages of a powerful laser without the drawbacks when you don't need the power. Focusing is still a manual process, but easy to do. Included is a small focusing guide, with one step for engraving, one for cutting thin materials, and one for cutting thicker materials. Place the guide on your material, loosen the two screws on the side, slide down the laser onto the desired step of the guide, and tighten the screws. It just takes a second to do. Stepping back, we can see the Class 1 laser certified enclosure. It fully surrounds the laser, containing the laser light and the smoke and fumes. The crimson polycarbonate adequately filters the laser light, allowing you to use the Falcon 2 Pro without needing to wear eye protection, keeping you and everyone around you safe. The lid slides open, which gives easy access to the inside of the machine. The lid also has two safety sensors, which detect when the lid is open or closed, and will prevent the laser from running unless the lid is safely closed. At the top of the enclosure is the camera that integrates directly with light burn. After calibration, the camera allows you to overlay a snapshot from the camera onto the workspace, letting you position designs with ease. I was able to minimize material waste by tightly nesting designs onto existing scrap pieces, just by moving the designs onto the snapshot. However, I did have some issues when I was trying to precisely position pieces for very small jewelry. The design was off by a millimeter or two. However, this was my first time using Lightburn's camera features, so it's possible that it's more a user error than a fault with the camera. I'll need to get more experience with the camera to know if I'm saving the configuration correctly or not. I love the workflow with the camera though. It's far easier than trying to manually align the laser nozzle. The Falcon 2 Pro's enclosure has a built-in LED light bar that provides plenty of light and makes it easy to see. The Falcon 2 Pro has an engraving area of 400 by 415 millimeters, plenty of space to work with. Inside, we see the dual-purpose work surface. If you aren't cutting, then you can insert the metal strips onto their sides, which provides a solid surface with no gaps. When cutting, the strips can be installed vertically, 
This provides support to the material, allowing for ventilation, and enables offcuts to drop through and out of the way. The offcuts fall into the part drawer, which smoothly slides out on rollers, allowing you to easily remove the parts and clean the machine. My main complaint with this work surface is that it doesn't support your material nearly as well as a normal honeycomb bed. Creality only includes enough strips for every other slot, which leaves a relatively large gap when placed vertically. This means that cut parts will often fall through, leaving them likely to fall into the path of the laser as it cuts neighboring parts. You can see scorch marks on the backside of these maze pieces. You can move the metal strips from the ends to provide more supports and reduce those gaps in the middle, but you'll be reducing your usable work area, or have to readjust them each time which would be a pain. Another option would be just to remove the metal strips entirely, and place a honeycomb bed onto the drawer. That would give you the best of both worlds I think, providing enough support while still allowing for good ventilation. Speaking of ventilation, the Falcon 2 Pro has an exhaust fan built in. The included ductwork makes it easy to vent outside, or connect to an air purifier. Check out my recent review of the Laser Pecker air purifier if you want to see how it handles the Falcon 2 Pro. Without an air purifier, the exhaust fan does an excellent job at removing smoke. The included air assist compressor connects to the hose and power outlet on the left side. This lets you control the air assist via light burn. I'm not too impressed with the compressor though. It seems to be effective, the engravings and cuts that I've done show little sign of soot darkening the edges, and I've had zero indication of fire or flare-ups thanks to the air assist. However, the compressor feels a little weak, and even the air alarm light on the laser module turns orange occasionally. It's the only part of the entire bundle that I'm not fully satisfied with. The rest of the I.O. is on the front right. On top is the lock and key safety switch, as well as an emergency stop latch. The buttons below are all for offline engraving. You can save G-code files to the included microSD card, and use the buttons to position the laser, frame, and start and stop your designs. Finally on the right side is the microSD card slots, the USB Type-C connector to connect to your computer, power inputs, and the power switch. Assembling the Falcon 2 Pro was a bit of a project. While the frame arrives mostly assembled and cable managed, the entirety of the enclosure requires assembly. Each side consists of the panel and frame which all screws together. The manual gives clear step-by-step -step instructions. It took me just over 50 minutes to complete the assembly. I'd also recommend having a large table to work on. You'll want the space with a large number of pieces to manage. On the software side, to take full advantage of the features of the Falcon 2 Pro, you'll want to use Lightburn. Any other Gerbil compatible software will work, like the free Laser Gerbil. But a Lightburn license gives you access to the camera features, I'd highly recommend it. Creality provides a convenient list of recommended parameters to use, and from my tests, those recommendations are a great starting point for speeds and powers. So with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at some examples. The Falcon 2 Pro really shines when cutting wood. The 22 watt laser is extremely powerful, making clean cuts in 3mm plywoods at 700mm per minute. The air assist and ventilation do an excellent job at making sure even deep engravings are soot free. I found the ideal kerf offset to be 0.1 millimeters, which is average for this power of laser. This means that the diodes are pretty well aligned, but you may not get the most detailed image engravings. And my tests back that up. I would need to spend much more time dialing in the settings for image engravings to achieve the best contrast. For projects that need a lot of cutting though, the Falcon 2 Pro shines. Cutting out all of the pieces for this marble maze was very quick, and everything fit together nicely afterwards. Slate is still one of my favorite materials to engrave. The Falcon 2 Pro was able to remove quite a lot of stone, and gave very clean and consistent engraving on the slate coaster. My leather tests were also very clean and consistent. There is no evidence of soot or darkening around the edges. This is one of the cleanest leather engravings that I've seen. Anodized aluminum also works great. The engravings show no defect or deformation, and there is no dust that remains around the edges. This would be a good machine for anodized aluminum. Often, high-powered diode lasers can have a party trick by creating colored engravings on stainless steel. However, I could not find the settings needed for the Falcon 2 to create any colors on stainless steel. The higher powers created a very dark and durable black engraving on the stainless steel, but even the lower power settings still produced a gray with hints of other colors. It might be possible for colored engravings if you find the right combination of settings, but I couldn't find them in my tests. One little nitpick is on the advertising on their website. One section talks about efficient batch processing, and shows an example of custom text on metal plates. However, those examples are clearly die punched, and not laser engraved. And I'm pretty sure that that metal is brass, which diode lasers cannot work with. That was the only bit of false advertising that I could find though. So in conclusion, I found the Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt version to be an extremely effective laser engraver that is packed full of features, while also focusing on safety and ease of use. The enclosure keeps you and everyone around you safe, and makes it easy to vent the harmful fumes outside. 
The alarms and other safety elements, like the closed lid sensors, make sure that the operators are keeping safe. And when it comes to cutting, even the 22 watt diode was powerful enough to make quick work of plywood. And if that's not quick enough for you, then the 40 watt or even the 60 watt versions are available to give you even more power. The initial assembly was a little tedious, but once up and running it was easy to work with. The camera workflow was awesome to use, and allowed me to make full use of scraps of material without needing to measure and manually position the laser. And the Falcon 2 Pro works with a variety of optional accessories from Creality, including their rotary attachment for round objects, and air purifier to keep your lungs safe, so you can continue to upgrade your capabilities down the line. The 22 watt version of the Falcon 2 Pro sells for $1,299 US dollars at the time of recording. The 40 watt version is $1,899 US dollars. And the 60 watt version, the top of the line module with the adjustable 3 level laser beam, sells for $2,659 US dollars. I think that all three are excellent value for money. If you are just getting into laser engraving, and you want a fully enclosed laser for eye safety and ventilation, then the 22 watt version would be perfect. But if you know you need the extra power, then stepping up to the 40 watt or even the 60 watt version for that flexibility is still a good value when compared to other machines on the market. Most other machines are just the laser itself, so by the time you add on an enclosure, fume extraction, lights, and cameras, you'll be right in the same price range. So thank you all for watching my review of the Falcon 2 Pro Laser Engraver. What was your favorite feature? And what features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And leave a like if you found this video helpful. I have plenty of other laser engraver, 3D printer, and other tech projects coming soon. So subscribe so you don't miss out. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.